What the f is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwax Podcast with your favorite duo, Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Wow. wow. Today is a interesting day. You know when you're so tired that you just start getting an adrenaline rush and you start getting hyper? Yeah, it's almost like the tiredness becomes delirious, and then you just... what? Oh, I thought you were. I thought you forgot to put an earring on. I was like, you are Delulu this morning. Oh my god! If I did, I did, by the way, I have to say that because this week has been incredibly hectic, which we will dive into, I have been dropping things, losing things. My room is a mess, and I feel like it's so true when you think people say that your mind reflects how your room is. You know, when your room is messy, your mind is messy. Hundred percent. And my room is trash. I actually cannot wait to finish recording this episode so I can just go home mm -hmm. and clean for three hours. Oh, I want to so badly. We need that. Our apartment is gross. We have hair extensions everywhere. everywhere. We have false eyelashes yeah. stuck to the kitchen sink. We have clothing all over every single surface level. We'll tell you guys what's going on. So, as you know from our last episode, we are currently in the process of moving out, which mm -hmm. in itself is a million documents, a million emails back yeah. and forth, measurements, getting the guy to come look at our space to see how much he's going to charge us for moving Dragging everything. the guy that we're renting from to keep his furniture there. All of that. And it's then on top of that, we have season two of The Family Stallone coming, coming out. out. The, yeah, next week, I think. Next <gasps> week, February 21st. Holy shit. So we have a huge press tour. We did it for that this week. And then on top of that... It's New York Fashion Week. Yeah. So I haven't been double or triple stacked every day. It's been like four to five events. And this has always happened to us where we have like a period of nothing. Yeah. And then set, it's all one or two weeks where yeah. we are the most busy we've ever been in our entire like, lives. The days start at sometimes 5 a.m., 4.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then our last event starts at 9.30 p.m. Yeah. And all, all day. My God. Well, well, I mean, we can go into So you've been double booked because I'm not a fashion girly. Sistine is more. So she's been going. I mean, I've attended. So I'm attending one with you tomorrow. I mean, I, I'm her plus one. But she's going to all these fashion events yeah, on top of it. Yeah, but looking at me now, I'm not reflecting this brand. You, I look like a slob kebab. I won't. I won't. Yeah. I won't want to like shit on you, but you kind of do I look slept a in this. You did sleep in that. I, just don't care. I don't know how you worked out this morning. I was very impressed by the fact that you decided to go to the gym. I don't know if I could ever mentally go to the gym when I haven't been in bed. I thought, past. you know what? This is the first morning that I haven't had someone like touch me or ring my yeah. doorbell at 6 a.m. And I was like, okay, I want to do something for me. Right. Um, but that was a mistake. I lasted about 30 minutes, walked, watched a YouTube video, and I called it a day. Oh, my God. I also want to go into, like, fashion events in general because I have a lot of opinions about those events. Should we start with the press tour, then we'll go into fashion yeah, week? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. So – we went on a lot of really cool shows. Yeah, we did oh Kelly gosh. Clarkson the first day. <gasps> and can I just say, Kelly Clarkson, you are mother. 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 Mother hen. We she love you. She raised us. She's the best person I've ever She's met in my life. the nicest person. She's the most comfortable host we've Radiant. ever had. She's just like an energy. Like, you know when you walk or you know when you're constantly watching – these talk show hosts or celebrities on like TikTok and Instagram. And that's the only format in which you see them. Yeah. And then you see them in real life and you're like physically standing in front of them, breathing the same breath. It's that so sounds really surreal. creepy. But I'm like, you're a real person. Yeah, you're real. I never think it sounds so weird, but celebrities to me sometimes don't feel like real people no. until you're in the same room as them. Yes. And honestly, 99% of the time they disappoint. But Kelly's the 1% and she really did not disappoint. She is so lovely. So lovely. Also, her voice, insane. Although I was so annoyed. So we did a we did an interview with the whole family, and typically when we do a talk show with five of us on the couch, yeah, it is like a fight to who can get the word in because, of course, you want to be the one that speaks the most because then you get more airtime, right? Yeah. But <laughs> my mom thought it'd be a good idea to bring up on the Kelly Clarkson show, which, by the way, this isn't a story that is repeated often in my family. No. So I was very caught off guard on live TV um, when she brought this up. She had mentioned that I one time had nine guys walk up to my room and just me on the Kelly Clarkson yeah, show. And was, I was like, hold on. That was a true. I heard 
audible gasps in the but audience. Like, first of all, she did me so dirty. So dirty. And then I had to sit there and like try to, uh, well, no, you're getting it wrong. I was 13 and it was it, summer vacation. And I was like, God, I it, sound it like it a crazy so ho. Wrong. It so, yeah, it sounded like you were, you were going through it. Like I was it. swinging. You were going through it. You were pulling at uh, 13 or something. <laughs> but like, why? I, but Not it, necessary. It was like such an overdramatic way of like explaining that you had guy friends over summer with girls. It was like you and Michaela. Yeah, they forgot to mention that I had females there too. But the best part is, of course, that's the clip that they pull for all their social media. I'm like, oh, I know. Amazing. I didn't this is so good that. for me considering I talk about being single all the time. I this know. makes me look so normal. I will say one thing that we did frequently on every single show was <laughs> exclaim how we are so single and I feel like I feel like you guys I feel like that was a lot I feel like it was kind of bad I and think it we're now like, making it like a personality trait is, and it's not something to be bragging about we're putting it out in the universe that we're single but unhappy like we, we're not saying we're single and we thriving. did it on extra tv we did it on et we did it with every foreign press junket every. we were talking from to a woman from the uk Yes. And we literally looked straight into the camera and go, we prefer British boys. Call us. We're available. Why would we do Why that? Why would we when do that? When we're trying to promote a show. No. Why would we, we do that? We look desperado. <laughs> like, we look so oh desperate. And I have to say, I honestly thought about it. Because at, at the eighth or tenth whatever interview we did, and it was brought up again, I it hit me for a second. I go... Hmm, this isn't looking good on me. Like, I don't like this outfit. I don't want to rewear it again. And it's kind of starting to smell. The and thing I, is, I'm starting to like, you truly stink the room never up. know what's going to come out of your mouth when you're doing a live taping of something. You really don't know. Because when you're editing and you have the rights to like cut something yeah. out, you can sort of just go off the cuff. But when you're being interviewed in real time, live TV, it could get a little dodgy. And sometimes you try to say things for shock factor and then you realize back, you're like, oh, it didn't hit. Yeah. It didn't land it, the way no, I thought there was it would. A lot, there was a lot of like lulls. Uh, there was a lot of lulls. But yeah. you, I don't think I talked a lot this press tour. I Did was, I talk a lot? You talked a lot. Yes. I think Scarlett stepped it up. Scarlett usually doesn't like to get a word in. She she tried. Yes. She bulldozed her way in. So on top of the whole press tour, which was every single day, yeah. we also... Went to Jimmy Fallon. <gasps> Which for us is like the mecca of talk he, shows. He is, he's Kelly's mom. He's dad. Yeah, he's, dad. he's great. By the way, we want to also preface that we have known him for a long time. Not personally, but we did the Golden Glows with him when we were. It was 2017. Oh God, 2017. It's 2024. Holy crap. I was in college. Sistine was in. Were you in high school? I was in high school. Oh, yeah, Scarlett was like in middle school. Yeah. And he was so nice to us during that journey. We were so scared. We didn't know what we were doing. I have to say. Worst looks we could have he ever done. He is the type of presence where you see him in person, and he is just, like, a force. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is about Jimmy Fallon, but just his aura when he walks into the room. Like, you feel him in the room before he even yeah, steps in. Yeah, so true. Also, he's way taller than I remember. And super handsome. He's the man really does handsome. not age. Have you ever seen the young photos and videos of him? Don't get me started. Him on SNL? You're a handsome man, Jimmy. Don't you forget it. But it was fun. We did so many TikToks with him, and they are doing really well. They're well, can clever. we talk about who else was on the show <gasps> at that time? You guys, this, this is, is weird. This is pretty baffling. I, I promise you, I think now, I think he's following me. <laughs> kidding. You are being stalked by but, your celebrity crush. Yeah, Callum Turner. I said last week that I saw him in Soho. And I was shocked because I pretty much talked him into existence. Yeah. I didn't think there was ever a, a point in my entire life that I'd see the person that I saw on my phone in person. He was on Jimmy Fallon yeah. the same night. We find out, oh, we're walking to He's... Sly's dressing room. Who's the dressing I room saw... next door? What are the odds? The Callum name? Turner. I was like, God. I wasn't upset. But well, did I meet up now? So, you guys, the, the saga continues. <laughs> One day we will meet. And... I will not bring up my podcast to him so that he will never see these things. But I will say everything other than the fact that I'm a big fan and I know everything about him. I'll just pretend Such I don't know anything. Such a big fan. Such a big fan. Just big fan. Big fans over here. But it was really fun. We also did extra. We do a lot of these like press junkets where you're sitting on a couch for a couple of hours and you're getting interviewed by every single country, mm -hmm. which is pretty surreal. We get like Australia, then you have like Italy, then you have, we had Britain. I do have to like, say though, I love my family so much. Just so, so, so much. Uh, I agree with this. But when you're tired and everyone's running on no sleep 
and we haven't had a proper meal in three days because yeah. there's no time. And then we start to just get a little bit agitated. Mm -hmm. We are like the worst people to be around each other because we each bring a different level of like hangry. Yeah, but it, we're also very dramatic. No so one's level-headed. No one is level-headed in our family. You know what I hate? When you we're constantly competing with who's more tired. Yeah. I'm more tired. No, no, no. You're, you're young. More, I'm, I'm more tired. tired. No, I'm more angry. No, you're more angry. Oh, I had less sleep than you. Oh, no, I had less sleep. I had one hour. I had 20 minutes. Well, it's I just, woke up 15 minutes earlier than you did. So you slept. I, know, I mean, it's so dumb. And this is, it's it's like, it's like when you're on summer vacation and you come back from college and you're staying in a house with your parents again, and then you feel like you're a child. I love you, mom and dad. I, I need my space again. I need I it. I need my space. I love you. Thank you for everything. But Go back to Florida. But for a they second. did leave on an amazing note yeah. because New York Fashion Week is still happening. So I still have all through next week. I'm pushing through, guys. I'm almost done. But last night yeah. was their last night here. And it couldn't have ended in a more epic, incredible, surreal, holy shit way. Yeah. You guys, Scarlett, our little baby sister Scarlett, walked in the Tommy Hilfiger fashion show. La like last minute, by the way, which we is so scary. Were, Sophie and I were clinging onto each other for dear life. We have never been more nervous. You can hear for me in anything. the background. I didn't want to cheer because I knew that that was like the not proper etiquette for runway shows. But I had to. Sh I had to throw in a little. Woo! Yeah, you were doing woo in every woo! video. Woo! But she was quiet, so Rose. good. She was great. I was like, what the heck? She was great. I, I remember when we did the Dolce Gabbana one years ago, which was, by the way, not. I sh by the way. Should have never done it because I'm here to tell you, no runway model Sophia, sitting you know at this what? table. Maybe the execution wasn't great, it but was, the experience was phenomenal. Did we look bad at the end of the runway? Absolutely. Yes. Did we look like we shouldn't have been there? Those Absolutely. photos will one day haunt me. But the memories will last forever. I will get to say that I did it, but yeah. I will never do a runway thing. But Scarlett, natural. Killed it. Natural. Literally She's, killed it. I mean, it. look, the girl's 5'10". She looks like a supermodel. She photographs great. It's just, it should be. You know what? You know, she's like the Kendall Jenner of our Why family. Why is it that the youngest sister just like has it easy, has it all? It's, I don't know. It took I me don't 25 know. years to like finally figure out my face. Yeah. And, and like how to apply makeup and how to photograph decent. Her, she's been hot since the womb. I know. But, but in our defense, I feel like it has to do with social media because Everyone that's a Gen Zer today looks like they're my age, which that's is fair a bit horrifying. Like fair you enough. do not want to be looking thirty when you're twenty two from the makeup you wear. Like I see, I see some eight year olds doing a more intricate skincare routine than I do. No, you know what's tripping which me? Which is up? horrifying. Those girls on TikTok that are maybe in like seventh grade, mm -hmm. and they're doing the get ready with me's before school oh my God. and they're just so mean and they're putting on like retinol and doing all these serums and I'm like first of all your skin is perfect I know oh yeah you're 14 I I know like, but why, they're, why are you doing retinol and vitamin C I know but they're doing like drunk elephant products which is like I think every so, yeah, when you were 13 what moisturizer did you use none I'm pretty sure I used like I think mom's a two in one I like I, I don't I know actually can't. maybe I put head and you shoulders so on my funny? face I don't know and now I'm thinking <laughs> Uh, probably. Probably. Probably as like a lotion. Yeah. I can't remember anything that I did like before school. I'm trying to think about my routine before school when I was their age. I remember the, the day I dis discovered makeup. You did um, like makeup. I didn't know how to do makeup. Maybe because I just, maybe I had a little bit of an identity crisis. I just thought I looked like such a boy. No, I did. No, I did. Girls. Oh. I looked so boyish. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> and I remember I was going through my mom's products one day and I found this black eyeliner and I tight lined my eyes for the first time and I looked in the mirror. I was like, oh, this is me. And I looked insane. So from that day on for school, I would wear no makeup, no foundation and just tight lined my eyes. Oh, I looked no. crazy. You, like, you, were prob you looked like um, Wednesday Adams. Like, no wonder no bit. guys liked me. I looked like I insane. Guys, you know what's funny? I got on... Uh, in high school, I got on. I don't. I didn't win any superlatives in high school. I won zero. I won zero. My ex boyfriend from high school got best Quizlets. So that shows you what type of <laughs> that you type I went for. But I did win one thing. What I you know there was a crush list. Yeah, I was on the most. You were on the most yeah. people's crush list. Did I ever tell you that? What the heck? I know. Sophia, then shut up. You were hot in high I school. I wasn't. I wasn't hot. I'll tell you what it is. I was. I was sweet looking. 
and I was really innocent. And I think that I was, I was friends. No, I was really, really nice to all the guys. And I think, I think guys, I think guys like, you know, they have, cr- they have guys have crushes on okay, well, girls Sophia's at Okay, explaining that it's the sweetness, she was hot. I was Let's not. Just shut up. Just shut up. Nope, no. Nope. Shut up. You, by the way, we can agree that I was not hot. You know what we should have won? What? Most likely to be on a reality show. I did Hello. win that. What? You won that? In college. What did I win? Did I ever tell you that? <laughs> she, no, you don't tell me anything anymore. Wait, yeah, so in my sorority, this is so funny, we had superlatives for our sorority, and I didn't even know this was a thing for seniors. And the first slide, because it was like 100 slides for all the girls, and they each get one. Mine was most likely to be on a reality show. And I was, when I tell you, insulted. I was like, how dare you? I, like, I would I said, never stoop to that go, level. Who do you think you are Mm-mm. judging me because I have a last name? You think automatically and because I'm I have millions of Instagram show? followers and because I post like I should have one? Who d- the what nerve. trash do you think the I nerve. Have? And suddenly, and suddenly, it's like they freaking brought this into my life and now I am a Reality star. You manifested that too hard. That was Should we funny. talk about a very, very special holiday approaching this week? Sure. It's the best holiday ever when you're in a relationship. I disagree. I like Valentine's Day single. You. Ha- it's all about how you look at it. That is. That is. It's such all about a how you look at it. Like you wouldn't. Okay, let me ask you this. That's like saying, "Oh, I, I." Have you ever had a super romantic Valentine's Day plan with your ex? Yes. Oh. Yes. I got in a huge fight with No, no, I've had actually you know what's you know what's funny? I read about February. And this is like a thing, a theory that in February is pivotal things in relationships that happen. Either you end things or it's starting to end with your significant other, or something new starts. Like you get an influx of people. So this is good for us. Yes, it's either or. It's it's either but from look and or you meet the person at least, even if it doesn't happen at most, like it's the person that you're ending up dating later. That's interesting. But it's funny because I actually had most of my fights on Valentine's Day. Well, I read somewhere that if you see a squirrel on Valentine's Day, that's really bad luck. And that a man is about a to end. Squirrel. Enter- yeah, a squirrel. Like Why? a rodent. A squirrel. So if you see a squirrel on Valentine's Day, sorry guys, you're screwed. Because apparently mm-hmm. that means the next person that comes into your life is going to be, quote, squirrely and like kind of cheap and isn't going to be a good boyfriend to you. Yeah, that is the dumbest so, thing I've ever heard. We live in a city with pigeons, squirrels, and rats running around as frequent as humans. Stay indoors. You, I don't know what to tell you. Hot, I'm not taking hide. chances. This Valentine's Day, hide in your apartment. Yeah. Well, what, what was our plan? Want to know what our grandmaster plan was? We're like, we should take out sushi and pizza and just go crazy with the cuisines. That, like, Fab. We're going to be inside anyway. Fab. It's fine. Galentine's. How great is that? Pizza and sushi and girls. Yes. Fabulous. And then probably a funny heartbreak movie or something or like love movie or anti-love movie. I don't know. But Valentine's Day is coming up and I feel like every single time. Yeah. In a relationship, I think I've only had really one or two good Valentine's Days. My, You know what's funny yeah. though? My last relationship, our, one of our first dates was on Valentine's Day. So... Which is probably a good sign, which also kind of makes my theory correct. But and my other ex, we had a huge fight on Valentine's Day. That was pretty much like See, towards I, the end of everything. I had a first date for this upcoming Valentine's Day and I canceled it. Why don't you kind of I actually think that Sistine had a date for Valentine's Day. Not intentionally, it was supposed to be because they're dating. This is their first date and it was supposed to be on Valentine's Day. What is wrong? This boy. Just There's to, something suspicious. suspicious. I don't entirely trust his intentions. And you know what? Go off of that Sly feeling. Sly told me that too. I explained the whole situation to him and he said, already you're having doubts? Yeah. He goes, why are you ignoring all of the signs That's in your what I'm gut? saying. He's like, why are you doing it? You're already setting yourself up to fail if you go. He's like, yeah. screw it. And he goes, he always says the same thing. He said... Time is your greatest currency. Mm-hmm. Do not waste it. It's so true. Don't waste it on someone that you're not going to pursue. No, it's true. So I was like, if you are putting in your energy into someone you're already getting actual physical freakouts over, like not freakouts, but like a little off, don't do it. Well, let me tell you guys this speaking of energy and putting ourselves out there, I, <laughs> I'm constantly on the hunt. I'm like a leopard looking for prey when it comes to dating right now. And 
you know, I have different methods to the ways that I like to track down these men. And one of which was I followed this guy who is on TikTok. I don't want to talk about it, but he's really cute. No, because she means physically. No, no, no. On Instagram, on Instagram, on Instagram. I've been following him for months and I was hoping he would notice. Newsflash, he didn't notice. So last week I said, you know what? Waving the white flag. I'm going to let it go. Manifestation is real. People always come back around. I did something a little crazy. I will admit, a little crazy, a lot crazy, um, but kind of on brand. It's kind of on brand. Kind of on brand. I'm not for me. surprised that you did it. I did encourage it. Though. Sophia and I were on our way to, I think it was the Jimmy Fallon show, right? Yeah. And we get in our car, and we're pulling away from our apartment. And as we're approaching the stoplight, I look across the street and I go, "Hmm." That guy is really cute because there will never be a guy that isn't cute that we won't point out. And I was like, we will point out anyone that's cute. You did it on the way here. I did. He was so cute. He was cute. But he's checking you out. Why do you always say that? Because I had my glasses on. I was staring at him and he did a up and down for you, which is good. And I told you this. Proud. You seem, Jealous. Proud. You seem <laughs> happy for you. Happy for you. Um, but anyway, so I see this guy across the street and I'm like, he's really cute. And you said, Sistine, that's, we'll call him Sam. That's Sam. Yeah. That's the, that's the Sam that you were following. And then we see him walk into this store, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to be honest. It was a sex shop. Yeah. Sophia immediately goes, you need to get out. You need to go in there. You need to follow him. You need to follow him. I don't know why on impulse. I didn't even hesitate. I said to the driver, stop the car. In the middle of the street, I rip my jacket off. I run down the street. Yeah run into the sex shop to try, like now thinking about it, right. (laughs) I can't believe I was trying to set up a meet cute in a sex shop, but desperate times call for desperate measures. And here's the worst part, right? I walk in right as I'm walking in. So bad. He's walking out. He's walking out and I'm already pacing my way in there. I go, God damn it, God damn it. We connected for like a second with yeah. eye contact. Well, I but- saw, I saw him, I saw him as when you guys passed each other, me and the driver were like, ooh, like that. We both were like, no, that was so bad. No, the story gets and worse. He turned, I remember he turned and looked at you Fuck. as you were walking in. And I could see him hesitate to go back <gasps> in. I swear to God. And it almost was like he blinked <gasps> twice and he decided to walk away the other way. And I go, no, I, I know why he probably walked in out of curiosity because the way the store is set up, it looks like a 90s locker room. And then in the very back are all these sex toys. Yeah. So people always go know. in. Yeah, they go in out of curiosity. Like, what is this place? So now I'm already walking in and I can't just stop in the, like we literally passed in the door frame. I can't just yeah. stop and turn around. He's gonna be like, what are you doing? So I had to walk in and it gets worse. I had to pretend to like browse the yeah. aisles and there's no one else in there. And then one of the girls comes up to me that works there and goes, hi, can I help you with anything? I was like, no, I'm just looking. I said, for you, for my sister. Oh my <laughs> so God. So I'm just looking for my sister. And the worst part is she said, oh wait, I recognize you. You're a regular here. Oh, God. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That is like actually. I can explain. That's like, that's horrible. That's- I can explain. One, we live near it. Two, they sell roses and flowers. So that it's not just stuff. They sell merch, which the merch is cool. I've never actually purchased an expensive electronic toy. We've, we've perused by it just because out of curiosity, but sometimes they serve Gatorade and tequila and they hand it out. That's so true. I'll stop for that. It's kind of fun place. I'm not gonna lie. No, but god damn it. I just got it was so it was close. So close. It, it was, was so close. It was it was a missing connection. It was one of those moments where they could but I also think everything happens for a reason. And if you guys were supposed to meet at that time, it would have happened. And maybe meeting at a sex shop probably is not the best time to happen yeah, but because you wouldn't have story. been able to... What a good story that would have been. It would have been very funny. See, I would have purposely looked at certain items and then look at him and be like... Oh, God. See, that's that's like... Def- that defeats the no, whole but, rom- but like, romance. What if, what if I caught him looking at something that was just like super gnarly? Yeah, and he was very interested? Wouldn't you'd be, be like... Weird? Yeah, I know. You would be kind interested. Of, it's kind of like the best way. This is the second guy that I've chased into a sex, a sex shop. It's okay. It's okay. We do things when we need to do them. Okay, anywho, Sistine, I know that you're still on your 
dating escapades. But she also, by the way, she's fine people. She has enough dates to last her four years compared to Sophia over here. But Valentine's Day, we're going to have a great time. Maybe it's not with the guy that you've chased into the sex shop, but it will be with your sister. Wait, I have an idea. Hmm. Oh, no. You brought your journal, right? Yeah. You brought your journal. Can we read an entry from last Valentine's Day? I don't know if I... Yeah, I know you do. Go get it. Go get it. No, I don't know if I've written anything. Oh, this is such a good idea. (sighs) Okay, if you guys don't remember, two episodes ago, I lost a bet because I thought a guy, which is ironic enough, I should have never trusted this guy, the guy that we canceled on. We, I say we as in I'm dating him too. You are. Sistine canceled on that I thought he would text her on time. And if I lost it, then I had to read something from my journal. And when I tell you guys, like... I've never even read an entry. I don't... I'm like actually not So in honor of Valentine's Day... Let's go to February 14th, I don't 2023, I or 2022. Oh, my God. I have 19. Look at these ancient scrolls, all this scripture you have in there. 17. 2017? Do you have it? Well, I can read you literally my first entry in this book that was about a boy. Okay. It's from 2015. All right, fine. Sophia's going to read a 2015 This is a short one. Journal entry about a boy. This is a short one. (laughs) May 11th, 2015. How do you let your boyfriend know that you don't love him anymore? (gasps) Currently, I'm writing this while I'm FaceTiming him, and he proposes that we do this every night. Hell no. That's the end of the entry? (laughs) Keep reading. I know you're lying. So this is the next day, or a few days later. And by the way, guys, I'm also like 17 at this point. I'm not, this is 10 years ago. 10 years ago, basically. It's been a few days since I last wrote in this. And since then, I've realized my feelings for X. I do love him. I'm just not in love with him. But it's not his fault. I've been secretly trying to distance myself. And so the breakup won't be as hard. I knew from the start that being in a relationship so close to graduation would cause me to do this. My mom calls it defense method. Um, My previous entry is an example of that method. He's coming over tonight and sleeping over. My parents are out of town. (laughs) (laughs) You're so bad. I'm not nervous, but it's hard to realize that this will probably be the last night that we'll ever do this. As much as my future with him and I is making me sad, we we learned that. (laughs) Do it, do it, do it. No way you're going to write this. (gasps) This is so stupid. Stupid? I'm scared. No, this is such a dumb do it, thing. Do I know. It. No, like, I try to it. be so like I love it. I actually think I it's try to really be so well. spiritual. It's well written. We learned that in Buddhism, religion class, that we must live in the present time to avoid suffering, and that's what I'm doing with with him, <laughs> with uh, my high school boyfriend. <laughs> Keep going. I want more. I love this. You this like is this. so good. <laughs> Keep going. You know what? This feels like like you're the new Carrie Bradshaw in Sex in the City, and this is one of her articles. Oh gosh, I can read something from when I was. That there. was. You just took me for a roller coaster. Listen, I told you I have good entries. Because I tried to journal once, and it literally was one giant run on sentence, and I yeah, it was horrible. But this is really well written. Right. Right. Oh my god, we should publish this into a book. Oh, okay. Want me to try this one? Yeah. Oh God, I don't even know. I actually can't. I haven't. I can't read the whole thing, or I can't. I didn't read the whole thing. So read I don't. the date. Read the date. April fifth, twenty nineteen. Ooh. I hate liking someone. <gasps> I'm. <laughs> I've never been one of those people who enjoy crushing hard on the guy. I don't roll with it, and I let myself feel good about it. Mm. I think it's because I can't control these emotions unless I cut the person off completely. Ooh. Who knew that the individual would be a baseball player? I can't. I don't want to say his name. I wrote his name down. Ah, I, this guy. I can't stop thinking about him, looking at photos, talking about it with friends, and honestly, it feels like torture. See, right just now, I answered his text when I told myself I'd stop for the night. <laughs> I don't like being vulnerable. But you're, guys, an account- you're an accountable queen. Yes, even yep. dating my last boyfriend, or not the last, whatever, one of them. Um, I didn't cry about fights or anything like that that would have made a girlfriend sad. I physically have to flip over my phone to stop from checking 800 times per minute. I don't know why I'm liking him this much so quick. He's sweet, so handsome, and kills it in baseball. (laughs) Kills it in baseball. He kills it in baseball. (laughs) But we've only been texting, no phone calls or FaceTimes, and damn, I did it again. And this time, I waited to see if he'd be quick to respond. I feel absolutely insane. 
I'm not like this ever. And I despise the fact that he's always on my mind. I think that it's because I'm not sure if he's doing the same thing. I don't want to look like I'm, I need him or desperate for his text. Overall, I'm seeing how frustrating it is because I don't want to admit that I love the text, watching the games and everything that comes with the unpredictability of dating. I'm going to try to enjoy this, but starting tomorrow, I'm going to be less online and obsessed with him and talking. <laughs> I have a lot. These are, yeah, these can get crazy. Yay, Sophia. Okay, I'm not going to punish you yeah. anymore. Oh that God. was so good. Really? Yeah, because I know who you're talking about, so that makes it even more exciting for me. Yeah. I mean, I, we can just cut. We could probably cut that for last one. I, I loved it. I feel like that one was boring. No, I loved it. Oh, she wants to keep going. No, I don't, but I want to find, like, one that's funny. Or Oh, my God. Go off. I don't know. I thought we were going to get a paragraph, but we're getting pages from well, her. Well, I only write pages. That's the problem. I feel like I have really funny ones from when I was, like, single. Can you read something about me? Read something about me. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, I do. I know I have something of you. Uh-oh. Um, I'm sweating. What if it's really mean? I kind of want to hear it anyway. Mm. I know I've, I've said one thing mean about you because we were fighting. Can we read it? Read it. Read it. I promise I won't get mad. I know. I can find it. I don't even know if I do have it. Let me find it. <laughs> One of my titles is 2019, June 4th. I think I have a minor obsession with sweet potatoes. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh my god. This is the best thing ever. Another this is like is, an online diary. I would read it every day. Yeah, the first one is, should I be concerned that I momentarily forgot what year it is? That's fine. Oh my god. I know I have one of you that I was... How recent is this? Uh, not recent. I actually don't write about you a lot. I write mostly about <gasps> That's kind of rude. Dating. I want to be written about. I know. Okay. Well, oh. Oh, okay. This is a nice one of you. <gasps> February 12th, 2019. Landed back in LA last night from London where we spent the weekend visiting Sistine while she was shooting her shark movie. My boyfriend came with me and my mom and of course he was easy to travel with. Sistine seems really happy to have something she's passionate about. Other than her worrying about her love life, she needs this opportunity. <laughs> Extremely proud of her. Um, I know she doesn't like me saying this, but I see Sistine and I super close in the future once we feel more grounded in our lives in every aspect. Um, obviously we're best friends. Now, but it'll be exciting to see each other with family, spending holidays together, and having traditions. <laughs> That's really nice. And then I go on talking about my the the bad. Oh part my of god! Modern. Write about me some more. Yeah. I love that. Good job, Sophia. Oh, I'm thanks. proud of you. You you followed through with the bet. I know. Was it? I have. There's ones in there that I sometimes sit and read my journal at night where I there are old entries, but like I write about every single date I go on. And I will, because I want to remember these moments. I wonder though, because uh, it's like, really funny. Every single person, every single therapist, every single self help, whoever, always recommends journaling. Mm -hmm. Is there actual evidence supporting how it's good for you, or do people just yeah? Like, I think for what's me, the point? I think for me, it's it actually has showed me how what things I have not changed in the last mm. ten years, and it's funny to see like my habits even in high school about. I'm really bad at not being confrontational about my emotions with men and I'll, you know, push it, push it, push it until there's a breaking point. And I did that in high school when I was 18 and I still kind of do that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not just, or you, or I feel like whenever I'm overwhelmed on a date, there's sometimes you don't, you know how you feel like you, there's so much you want to say, but yeah. you don't know where to put it. And you just want to like yell, talk, I'll write it out. And it feels good. Cause like, sometimes I'm like, I have to write, I have to write this but out. But you know what I, I would like about the fact that you have entries from 2015 is that you can go back and mm -hmm. see how much you've changed and I just realized something mm. that entry was what 2019 2019 that was five years ago yeah and you'd mentioned in that entry that I was having trouble with my love life or boy problems or whatever do you know this is so sickening for me to even say I know exactly who this person was that I was having trouble with at that time who you guys know him very well. Don't tell me Mr. Who I think it is. What do you want from me? And no he says way. nothing. Him. Are you serious? Him. It was Sophia. Him? It was actually him. And now I feel so dumb. 
It's been over five years. What is it about well, that one person that's like a rock in your shoe and you can't get rid of it? Well, at least on October 26, 2021, oh. Sistine has no idea, but X wants to become official this week with her, as in boyfriend girlfriend label. It's become. <gasps> Wait, you knew this before I did? She has become a happier person since they started dating. It's really nice to see her in a healthy relationship. She deserves it. This weekend will be crazy with his birthday and our Halloween party and leaving for Palm Beach to shoot the sizzle reel. It's quite stressful, but the excitement overshadows my worries. Um, yeah. God damn. Is that funny? So you were good at that point. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, wait, oh. wait. We have to talk about wait. this. Okay. Wait. Can I start wait. this out? Because this is so bad. This okay. Is- the- Probably. Let me just give context. Sophie and I, this pops up on our phone. And when I say we were rolling on our carpet, peeing in our peeing. pants, crying our eyes out, we Bowl, were laughing. Sobbing. Go so on. hard. Just go on. Okay. This was literally not uh, maybe five days ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> I woke up feeling horrible, like hormonal, emotional, horrible. And I have not felt an overwhelming amount of emotions that bad in so long. It was the exhaustion from the bachelorette party. It was the stress from this upcoming week. It was my hormones. I was an absolute nightmare and mess. You were a PMS monster. I was a monster. Monster. And I did tell Sassy, I warned her. I warned you. And I said, after the fact, uh, for, uh, uh, after in the you middle of the day, yelled when it was, at me. No, well, I was snappy. I didn't yell. I knew I was being a brat, but I was not feeling good. So we're walking. We needed to shop for some of the clothes for this press stuff, right? <laughs> We're outside our apartment. I start crying in the middle of the street as we're walking for one block. We were out shopping for two hours total. For that one block, I let the tears grow because I thought I was in a safe space, right? Turns out, turns out we had a lens on us. Turns out that that lens decided to upload that to a computer, and therefore put it online. So as one does in the morning, I'm going through my Instagram on the main feed, and I see a very familiar photo of an outfit I wore that morning. And I go, what is this? I pull it up, and the photographer had decided to post on his Instagram the photo of me crying next to Sistine. Hysterical. Hysterical, right? Then. It gets better. It gets better. It so gets now better. I'm thinking in my head, oh my God, what the hell? So I showed Sistine the photo. Then that night, I decide to go on a little bit further. Because when you have one photo that a photographer takes of you, there's usually like 10 more. And I'm like, oh no, how many did he get? So I decide to like look up and see like what other things he posted. Sometimes when you get these like random paparazzi photos, they don't really go anywhere. And you're like, yeah. okay, it's going to just die on the internet. Um, oh. We wake up to a GQ article titled, I go Sistine. titled Sylvester Stallone's daughters are schooling you in good proper workwear. And the photo they used is Sophia bawling. Bawling? <laughs> My eyes. I've but, never been in GQ. But also. In fashion. They decide. Our outfits were absolutely heinous i am by no means trying to school anyone on this outfit it was horrible you guys i intentionally was feeling so bad that day i thought i would wear if you look at the photo for me and susan can explain her, her outfit i'm wearing no makeup I'm wearing glasses to cover my eyes because I'm dark circling it i'm gonna upload the photo on youtube i have a dark shirt with brown sleeves jeans and Ugg boots. I'm putting in, when I say less effort than ever, ever, truly. So this article is written basically about how Sophia and I are stylish queens, right? Sophia's wearing Uggs, jeans, a regular bomber. I'm wearing a backwards hat, a fishing vest, a hoodie, old like carpenter looking pants, and electric blue sneakers. I look insane. Insane, but let me read you guys what this article described our fashion. What I say, I've never laughed so hard. But the best part is, but like, the they way were d- actually being they real. Were tr- no. Like they thought it was like 
That we no, we killed the outfit. This article was supposed to be a compliment, and, and, and it's and just it's a roast. So, it's GQ a roast. Roasted, roasted our us. outfits. Okay. I'm gonna read something. Ready? Okay. While strolling around New York Soho on Monday, they perfectly paired two casual dress codes that seemed to define the workwear binary in New York: Sistine, poppy hypewear, and Sophia in Brooklyn dad mode. <laughs> and then she goes on to describe what is Brooklyn dad Wait, mode. Wait, can I explain mine and then you Go do for yours? It. So this is me, and Sistine will explain hers. Simply put. Brooklyn dad style is working hard to look like you aren't trying at all. You are unkept, <laughs> cool, and fuss-free. You love vinyl. <laughs> you love off-Broadway performances. You love the idea of leaving New York, but not following through. And most importantly, Brooklyn dads love the classics. They love the classic. Sophia was smart to use a bomber jacket, the most eternal wardrobe staple in recent memory to go with slouchy but low-key blue denim ray-bans and big stompy boots foolproof you guys i feel called out because that is me to be honest this girl like even though i wouldn't say being called unkept and a dad is a very great compliment look but she basically called me out for saying i want to leave new york no no Mine's worse. Oh, God. Mine's worse. And they Sistine. said, and on the opposite end of the spectrum this is, is so Sistine. Let's start from the top. There's a baseball cap, but backwards, which seems quite standard. Next up for Sistine is the gillet, which could be an all-authentic and Bass Pro shop. But the younger Stallone sister has gone slightly Moonrise Kingdom. <laughs> It's covered in patches. It's a no-brainer with her carpenter pants that ideally are on the gruffier end of the outerwear to contrast. Plus, it proves that workwear can be cartoony, <laughs> hold on, and juvenile, and cool all at once. <laughs> cartoony and juvenile. And then she says, workwear, workwear has range and it took two famous daughters of one famous action man to teach us that. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I feel like, let me see who wrote this. Olivia Adams, such a good writer. Can I, like, can I literally, tell you, you actually killed the, uh, like, like, the article actually, I'm not Actually, the description and the detail, insane. I just, We're I, laughing because like the situation that was going on in this photo Oh my god. The worst time to ever take a photo. And the fact you twisted it and turned it into like a fashion article. Which, by the way, is so crazy because I purposely, every time I leave my apartment, I want to wear something with intention. Yeah. And I try to always put like my best fashion foot forward, yeah. right? And I nothing ever happens. No articles are ever written about me. Yeah. How is it that the one day we look absolutely heinous is like that's who they are. No, I... It, I look it juvenile and unkept. I'm... Un no, you're cartoonish. I'm cartoonish. You're yeah. cartoonish. I'm unkept and an old man. <laughs> Can you imagine? That was... Olivia, you really... When I tell you that was probably the you hardest made our I week. laughed. You made our week. But not out of, like, making fun of your article. Out of just the fact of the situation at hand that but you... Also, like, you I'm made us sound way cooler than we I'm were. I'm so flattered, too. Like, I'm so incredibly our flattered. Our first GQ article, but that was... I'm flattered was. and humbled. So it's a very weird feeling. I know. Very humbled, humbled and flattered. I'm... Hum I'm <laughs> you definitely... T I, I definitely did never thought I was a fashionista. But this definitely was exactly what I am. It's exactly what you are. Sophia's about to... Uh, Leave you just close the computer and she's ready for a mimosa. I am ready for a mimosa. I'm hanging out with the girls tonight while well, someone else is not. Ew. Ew, jealous. But we just, this episode was so much fun. We had so much we wanted to talk. Oh, we never talked about Waze Daddy. We'll talk about Waze Daddy next episode. Oh my God, there's so much about we Waze love Daddy. Him. You guys, wait till that episode. Okay, we love you guys so much. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Give us that five stars and we'll give you you know a little shout out if you have a question we'll check it out give me a virtual hug yeah we love virtual you virtual hug see you next tuesday bye bye